Minnesota. A recent study shows that Minneapolis is the seventh sweatiest city in the country, <laughs> the only city in the top ten not in the deep south. Variables for the study included heat index, proximity to bodies of water, and where I live. Uh, the late singer Prince was awarded an honorary doctorate in humane letters from the University of Minnesota last week, and as is with all college degrees, was also given an honorary 12-pack of chicken ramen and an honorary part-time position at a campus Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> a new study shows that the phrase, is funner a word, is Googled more in Minnesota than it is in any other state. <laughs> and that might seem embarrassing, sure, but it's loads better than the most popular Wisconsin search, is fun a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Another study recently revealed the most commonly misspelled words by state, with Minnesotans being most frequently tripped up by broccoli. And again, that might seem embarrassing, but to put it in perspective, Wisconsin just can't get GED. <laughs> uh, native Minnesotan Robert Reardon, who retired two years ago as the oldest flight attendant in the country at the age of 90, died this week. The thing that always impressed me was his courage, Reardon's youngest sister Bernadette said of him. And I think I speak for all of us when I say, what are you talking about, lady? <laughs> Courage of a flight attendant. Oh. Fuck. This year marks the 30th anniversary of the historic 300-mile superior hiking trail that leads from Duluth to just north of Grand Marais. And I gotta say, it's one of my favorite trails. Right up there with the trail from my bed to my eating shirt. <laughs> is, is that your eating shirt? Any shirt's an eating shirt if you use it right, Lizzie. <laughs> Wyzetta-based startup Foji <laughs> recently released an app of the same name that allows users to create their own emojis based off of pictures they've taken themselves. <laughs> Finally, I can accurately show my friends that I'm coming to terms with my own mortality, LOL. <laughs> A train derailed last Friday night in southwest Minnesota town Cottonwood, causing a large grain spill. Cleanup is underway, as most of the town was already down by the railroad tracks anyways. Gotta love those flat pennies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grab the middle rail. Uh, next Saturday is the annual open house for Duluth's Split Rock Lighthouse, the one day a year where the admission fee is waived completely. The promotion exists to fight the long-standing lighthouse stigma. Stay away, there are a bunch of scary rocks here. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota airline company Sun Country was recently approved to begin nonstop flights from Minneapolis to Cuba. And this might sound positive, but I gotta say, I'm not excited to have to start planning a separate trip to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Local diet ruiners Glam Doll Donuts are opening a second location in Northeast Minneapolis as soon as December of this year. To commemorate the opening, they will be unveiling their new donut, the Nor'easter, which is just a bike tire. <laughs> like how big do you think That's it about, is? It's a 10-speed. It can both hold it? Yeah. Uh, U.S. Bank Stadium's grand opening to the public is right around the corner with a two-day open house on July 23rd and 24th. Local residents unable to make the event are encouraged to empty their savings account, burn it, and then lose at something. <laughs> <laughs> New York Magazine recently praised Minnesota's local food and alcohol scenes, calling Minneapolis a capital of Midwestern cool. You heard of Dayton. Can we have pot now? <laughs> <laughs> Vikings backup quarterback Sean Hill wrote a letter to the town of Parsons, Kansas in defense of flag football, mm -hmm. saying the town's children should wait to tackle until much later grades. I think someone should tell Sean Hill that not all quarterbacks are getting tackled oh. as much as he is. <laughs> Vikings starting quarterback Teddy Bridgewater will be appearing on an upcoming episode of Celebrity Family Feud alongside four more NFC offensive players. 
they're expected to perform well, seeing as they have less combined head trauma than the average family feud team. <laughs> Show me CTE. <laughs> A uh, Department of Health survey of medicinal cannabis users showed that 66% of patients find significant benefits from marijuana, while 57% of patients find it unaffordable. Hmm, helpful but too expensive? I guess it really is it medicine. Is. <laughs> General Mills announced their first new cereal in over 15 years, the all-natural Tiny Toast. When reached for comment, a senior manager at General Mills said, we heard the complaints. Toast is too big and not around enough. We're going to give the people what they want. <laughs> A man in southeast Minnesota was arrested after drunk driving a lawnmower, stealing fence panels, and kicking a police deputy in the arm. A breathalyzer showed that the man had a BAC of .19, so he was let off with a warning since, as we all know, the legal limit on a lawnmower is .23. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Oz Festival in Grand Rapids, Minnesota released their lineup last week with the headliners including punk band Goodbye Yellow Dick Chode, <laughs> jazz fusion group The Flying Funkies, and a special performance from Judy Garland's Hologram. Notably absent everyone from The Wiz. <laughs> oh, that's too far. That's the line. All right. Maggie Fazelli Fardy, a writer for Experience Life magazine, recently shared some tips for making friends in Minnesota, including make the first move and be aggressive. So, the way to make friends in Minnesota is to just pursue friendship. Sorry, Maggie, but I, for one, wouldn't want to be a bother. Next, they're going to tell us that I have to take the last pretzel. <laughs> Won't be doing that. I'm a Minnesotan. And finally, plans for a new 40-story condo building were approved by the Minneapolis Zoning and Planning Committee to build, uh, be built in the St. Anthony Falls Historic District. The project is expected to bring with it the historic 20-something entitled douchebag, the old vape shop, and the traditional brand new unaffordable Minneapolis housing. <laughs> so, yeah. Once again, I'm Cody Nelson. And I'm Lizzie Gardner. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. tonight, we'll take 10 to talk about the internet, home to the world's most interesting cat videos and second most interesting Amazon. Until it was broken in 2014 by a picture of some girl's butt, the internet has served to connect billions of people across the globe with unprecedented amounts of information such as local weather forecasts, job boards, and live feeds of pandas. <laughs> but unfortunately, not everyone is able to join in on the proverbial panda peeping parade. According to recent estimates, more than half the world's population lives without reliable access to the internet. That means when 3.5 billion people want to watch someone fall over, they have to go outside and get lucky. Or, God forbid, watch America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> and worst of all, when these people think of vines, they're thinking of actual vines. <laughs> and the unconnected are not just people from countries where 20-year-old Americans go to take dating profile pictures, because nothing makes your Tinder profile pop like going to Uganda, digging a hole, calling it a well, and returning back to Maine. <laughs> no, people with minimal access to the internet also live here in the United States. In fact, in Minnesota, more than 550,000 people live without high-speed internet access at home. That's as if the entire population of Minneapolis didn't have access to high-speed internet. Just think of that an entire city not being able to log onto Facebook and immediately know how much the weather bothers their friends. <laughs> For example, in Kitson County, less than 4% of households have wireline broadband internet access. So if you live up there and have access to the internet, you basically become part of the Kitson County Illuminati, an exclusive group of power <laughs> brokers with the ability to send emails, read the news, decide who Netflix and chills, and, and who just chills. <laughs> and it's more than just being able to dry hump while watching reruns of Frasier. Increasingly, the internet is becoming an important resource for everyday life. Increasingly harder to conduct business, receive education and healthcare services, retain our youth, attract entrepreneurs, or stay in touch with friends and families. Today, 
broadband infrastructure and services are as important as roads and electricity in connecting rural places to the outside world. That's right. The internet is incredibly important in order to live a modern life. The United Nations has even called access to the internet a basic human right because without it, we would be uninformed, unemployed, and totally in the dark about Wang Wang's love life. <laughs> and yes, that's a real panda name when you're charged with continuing an entire species you can't really beat around the bamboo. <laughs> the internet is even more important in rural areas. The internet can provide access to online education, job training, as well as more opportunities for businesses to operate outside of cities. And even farmers, you know, those people with the big hats who are featured in political ads, even they <laughs> need the internet. Um, you know, the farmers who think they're out in the barn or they're on the tractor, well, he said actually quite a bit. He goes online and looks up latest technology. Um, he's been researching uh, John Deere on the John Deere website, looking at some new equipment. Um, they can get test results on uh, chemicals and fertilizers, um, find out the current market price. Really? I just thought farmers used the internet to invite me to their farm bills. <laughs> just like words always think I'm their friend. But the most important question is, what the fuck are you supposed to do in rural Minnesota without the internet? It's cold, everything is far away, and until Kevin Bacon gets to town, you're not even allowed to dance. Now there, thank you. There's a reason for this. It is expensive to install the wires that connect households and businesses to the internet. In sparsely populated areas, it could cost thousands of dollars just to connect one building. Because of this, many service providers have not invested in expanding their service to rural communities. It makes sense that companies will only build things that are guaranteed to be close to their customers. That's why every single Chico's is located within three blocks of a Michael's. <laughs> and when rural communities do have access to internet, it can be wholly inadequate. An additional 600,000 Minnesotans have access to only one wired internet provider, meaning they have absolutely no choice but to stay with them no matter how terrible they are. Think about it this way. Finding a service provider is like dating. In a city like Minneapolis, you have lots of options for different service providers and eligible bachelors half of which are named Declan and work in a Vixie bicycle shop. <laughs> While in a rural area, if you want to be in a relationship, you have to stay with whoever's in town, even if they're slow, inconsistent, and can't last a whole episode of Frasier. <laughs> Regard <laughs> Regardless of the financial reasoning behind the patchy broadband infrastructure in greater Minnesota, the result is a lot of people left without even the most basic access to the internet, even when they are paying for it. This is maybe best described by the most Midwestern metaphor ever made. A big part of the frustration for people is that they're paying quite a bit of money for a service that they're not getting, and that's you're, you're, you're ordering lobster and you're getting mac and cheese day after day, and you're paying for lobster, and it's not fun. <laughs> yes, paying for lobster but getting mac and cheese. The only time you should expect that is when you go to a Guy Fieri restaurant. <laughs> and much like Guy Fieri, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> Especially when you consider that Minnesotans love the internet. Mainly because the screens stimulate the sunlight we lack during the winter. <laughs> we love it so much that for the last four years, we have been the state that has hosted the annual Internet Cat Video Festival, a gathering of the region's recluse aunts who join together to share tips about how to avoid human contact, <laughs> check out the new spring line of lint rollers, and this is true, imitate the sound of their own cats in a giant cat head. Cat head mobile recording station where people would put their their heads inside the cat and imitate what they think their cat sounds like. I can't, I can't, I can't get my cat, I can't get my cat to go viral. Thank you, Internet, for giving them a platform to share their meows for help with the world. Now, even though that was positively depressing. <laughs> There, there is a bright spot here. 
At the, at, at the end of the most recent session, the Minnesota legislature has approved about $35 million to subsidize broadband infrastructure expansion in greater Minnesota. And while that bill was not signed into law due to a writing error, it is encouraging to see elected officials are willing to invest in services that people need. Hopefully soon, Minnesotans in all corners of the state will have access to reliable uh, internet right from their homes. But there's just one thing. But having robust broadband systems does not guarantee use. If you build it, they will come is just not true when it comes to broadband. Many rural Minnesotans do not have the financial resources or the skills necessary to enjoy the full benefits of broadband technology. That's exactly right. Just because people have access to the internet doesn't necessarily mean they will know how to use it. They need to be taught how to use the internet and who has that skill and nuance better than the comedians of Minnesota tonight. <laughs> sure, we're a bunch of kids from the Twin Cities that have never seen a cow or even really understand where milk comes from, but we know the internet like the backs of our soft, uncalloused hands. <laughs> so here at Minnesota Tonight, we have made a helpful training video for those across Minnesota who might be new to the World Wide Web. Take a look. Hi, I'm Brendan. If you can't tell by my tone and my body type, I'm known as the human inspiration for the Microsoft Word Office Assistant, Clippy. If you live in rural Minnesota, you may not have had reliable access to the internet for some time. It's common for new users to become overwhelmed, but not you. You're going to make the most of the World Wide Web today. First advantage of the internet? Utility. We can use the internet to take steps in living a healthy, productive life. I use the internet to search for jobs that are available in my area. And I can apply for them all, right from my desk. She looks busy. Let's keep going. After a hard day of work, I don't have to go to the video store or the dance hall. I can just go home and open up an internet window and load up the fun. That's right, Tani. The internet is also an endless source of entertainment. YouTube, Netflix, Jay-Z's glitchy, expensive midlife crisis, all the movie and music you could ever want, right at the tips of your soft, supple fingertips. I think I'm going to watch one episode of M.A.S.H., eat a good dinner, and get a good night's rest. <laughs> oh, Tani, you're something else. How's the job search going? I can apply for unemployment right from my desk. Terrific. But none of the internet's tools would be as rewarding if we couldn't share them with friends. I use the internet to connect to new friends. And plenty of old ones too. Here's a picture on Facebook of my middle school boyfriend Jeff graduating from his PhD program. <laughs> and here's one of him climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, and here's one of him holding his second child while his beautiful, natural blonde wife just stands in the background. <laughs> Can you believe it? The internet's social media helps us stay connected. All from my chair. My off-brand chair. Okay, let's just, let's just relax. <laughs> I'm nothing. I don't have any of this. I don't have a kid. I don't have a husband or... I'm gonna go check on Angel. <laughs> I can't even keep a plan alive. How's your internet job search going? I can sell my kidneys right from my desk. A cut, cut. Hi, Tani. Uh, I've noticed that you've been watching MASH for three days. False. Rewatching it so I can comment on the Tumblr of someone else who was watching it. Well, it looks like you're having trouble getting off the internet. Would you like help? Hey, Skaterface420. In the last episode of MASH, Alan Alda actually leaves his canvas bag, not his helmet behind. Lick your own balls and choke on them. It's easy to make friends on the internet. What? <laughs> Welcome to the internet, rural Minnesota. You've been missing out. Stop crying. <laughs> Minnesota
Minnesota tonight. 